Why would you drive when you can fly? <laughs> On the chopping block today is this VW Beetle pickup. The casting is from Hot Wheels, and let's pop it open. Once you disassemble a Hot Wheels car, you can easily pop out the wheels using some tweezers. Just like this. And if you do a lot of Hot Wheels cars, you'll end up with a ton of wheels. And uh, I'll just throw these in here. Maybe I'll use them later. Probably not. But while we're in here, uh, let's see if there's any kind of bits that'll get the old noggin juggin. And that's when I decided to do a flying car. I grabbed some of my 3D printed bits. And I went looking through my other bits boxes to see what there was around to use. I have a whole bunch of other things laying around too. These are just the ones that I happen to have in boxes. Right, usually I try to salvage the base in part, but not today. I made a whole new base for the car since I want to change everything about it. I cut a section of 1mm styrene sheet to fit in the middle of the casting. I wouldn't be surprised if this is not recommended, but I used the calipers themselves as a marking gauge on the styrene. My family got me this set of carbide burrs for the Dremel as a Christmas present, and I'm still figuring out how to use them, so let's try it out on these posts. That makes really quick work of this, and a huge mess. I have some of these Gundam add-on parts, and one of them fits the profile really nicely. I think it kind of mirrors the top there. And these add-on vents make really nice uh, boosters for the back. Boosters? Thrusters? Who knows? I needed to add another piece of styrene to get the bits in contact with the base I had started making. And with that glued together, I added a little section of tubing and decided to cut off the front fenders. The interior of the car is visible and kind of in the way, so I'll chop that off real quick. And with that out of the way, you can see it's nice and wide open through the front here. For the middle section detail, I started chopping up this model airplane fuselage and decided to go with this other chunk. It fit really well after some filing. There was a big gap in the end of the fuselage bit, so I made this vent that you will never ever see. This was kind of a waste of time, but I know it's there. Figuring out where to put this booster, I decided to make it an external engine, kind of hanging down underneath. This metal cone is like a drawstring handle, knob, what would you call that? The little dangly part on a drawstring. Anyway, it fit the engine really well, and I also had this nozzle that fit as an insert into my 3D design. Completely unintentional, but very welcome. Next, I used some of these styrene rings I've really been enjoying these sets of rings and vents and things, and they're cheap too. Now I decided I wanted to attach some wires to this booster, and I wanted the wires to actually go into some kind of conduit. So using a paper straw I was able to kind of just jam them into the end here, and four of them fit, and it gave it an interesting square profile on one end while staying round on the other. I glued all those together and I added some styrene into the front of this car. Like the video and subscribe. 
Oh, where did that bit go? Right, there it is. I think these are seats from a 144th scale plane. But I'm going to use them as mounts for my headlights. So I glued one to each side. And once those were symmetrical, I added the headlight bits. Is it just me or is this starting to look like the Reptar wagon? Anyway, I wanted there to be a nice solid connection to this engine. So I grabbed this brass rod and bent it into a nice curvy shape. Inset another one of those tubes. And that got the engine exactly where it needed to be. I'm taking some time and just adding a couple more greeblies on the side here. Circles and vents. Again, like I said, these circles and vents are amazing little bits to have around. Now, onto the bed of the truck, I wanted to add some detail, and I had this Hot Wheels city bus lying around. These vents on top looked pretty cool. But even better was the back of the bus. The plastic part of the base had these really cool fans and belts and tanks on it. So I stuck that on with a vent and another piece of a Hot Wheels interior. And for the last little rectangle, I cut off a piece of aluminum mesh. And that gave us a little bit of variation. I put some wires into the booster and I returned to some more circles because the details on the front of this Gundam bit were just asking to have something put on them. I think each little protrusion and detail just gives this build that much more character. And with that, it was time to prime. It's still really cold here, so I'm priming inside. Luckily, I have a nice extraction fan to take all the fumes away. Once everything got a nice coat of primer, I painted the truck blue and then did some shading with black over the engine and the underside of the car. And for the details, I did a little silver dry brush. followed by some highlighting with a lighter brown. This is pretty subtle, but there is some color variation. I think it comes across in the end. I painted the inside of the headlights silver, and then I mixed up this light blue-green color, like a turquoise. This is going to be that energy signature that you see coming out of the end of the thrusters and the boosters and whatever kind of sci-fi magic is going on here. I put a little pop of red in the top there on the tanks and then I wanted to add some variation to the blue body and while I'm doing this sponging I'll tell you about what exactly I'm doing so this is called the four horsemen and it's a group of diecast YouTube builders that build a different car in a different theme every month now this month this is obviously the base car, and the theme is Valentine's. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Valentine's? What does this build have to do with that theme? And I left it up to the paint job, so you'll see in a little bit. Just hang tight. They invited me to be the guest horseman this month, and I'll link you to all their channels down below. After doing some more weathering, I shot some pure white into those energy signatures to give a glowing effect. And I think it came out pretty well. The panels of the truck bed got an off-white. Followed by the Valentine's theme. 
I'd like to think of this truck as a delivery truck. And it's gonna be called Cupid's Delivery Service. So I painted on a heart with a long arrow through it on each side of the bed. You can see that here. And I went ahead and put an asymmetrical stripe down the hood. Now that it was all painted and weathered up, it was time to glue it all together. I've really been enjoying making nicely fit sub-assemblies lately, and it makes painting a breeze. Now with that all done, let's get on to some glamour shots. As you can see, I didn't make a proper base for this build, and there's a good reason for that. I have something really awesome planned for this build, and it's going to end up being a diorama. So hit that subscribe button and stick around for a future video, and you'll see this car again. As always, I want to give a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon. They are Sensei Level Jimmy G, Adam, Scratch Builders Andrew Price, Michael Dotti. Spaghetti a la mode, Harker, Kitsch, Paul Bechtel, and of course, my dollar store enablers. Thank you so, so much for the support. Well, that's going to be it on this one. Stay creative, and I will see you on the next bit.